I remember being, when I was a boy, making things, making go-karts and tree houses and all that kind of stuff. And then when you go to school, you do various different lessons. The design lesson to me didn't feel like school. It felt like playing. And I think fine job that you find fun. It's not work anymore, it's playing. And I think I'm fortunate that I'm in that position. For a living, I design and invent things. And I started out by designing products to help kids to concentrate in school. And I figured that there was a bit of a gap in the market to actually listen to what teachers want and what they find improves a lesson. And I designed a whole series of products essentially to help kids concentrate. I went to see the Science Museum to talk to them about how we could do an exhibition or come up with something around that. And uh, it was at that point that they suggested a role being interim residence. And that's, that's really how I ended up at the Science Museum. This is Hangar D3, and this is genuinely the first time I've been in here, so I'm really excited to see some of the stuff they've got. The statistic is that 95% of all of the Science Museum's stuff is out of the public gaze, so it's actually in places like this. And that's why it's so exciting. They've got so much stuff here. It's just brilliant. It's like a schoolboy's dream, this kind of place. It's a real national treasure. <laughs> For example, this, this is blue steel. So this was our equivalent to the Polaris missile, British equivalent. So this here, there's a Trident, uh, British Airways Trident plane. Um, here we've got a Comet. It's one of my favorite aircraft, the Comet, not least because of its design. And you can see the, the kind of sleekness of the, of the fuselage and the engines and the wing. It was very well considered, I thought. I think it's a beautiful aircraft as well. It's still the Boeings and the 737s and the, the contemporary aircraft, they're kind of odd and lumpy, but this I think is a very beautiful plane. I cannot say how much I enjoy seeing these things because it shows, you know, you don't jump to the final conclusion, you actually see how it came about, it was developed. And as I say, it makes it more accessible, it makes it more appreciable that you, you, you understand how it came about. It'd be great if this collection, if Blythe and if Rawton were opened up more so the public could see more of it because I think quite often there's a bit of a mystery to how a product or a, an invention or something iconic has come about. And in these kind of places, you see the progression, you see the mistakes, you see the blind alleys, but then you see how it's been refined. This may look like a piece of scrap metal, but it actually tells the story of why planes look like they do, especially the windows. These, this is a piece of the comet, and you can see this was a window, and you can see how much larger they are than contemporary windows on aircraft and they're squarer and what actually happened was the cracks formed at the corners of the windows and they ran across the fuselage of the plane and the plane fell out of the air effectively, they, they broke up. And the competitors, people like Boeing, who were slightly slower off the mark than, than the Comet, learnt the lessons and put in little small round windows and so that's why the planes that we get today have such pokey windows, it's because they learnt the lessons that the Comet, you know, unfortunately got wrong. I think the British have a great mix of pragmatism, practicality and creativity and it makes for a very good invention. So I think the British character and the sort of sense of humour as well all mix in to, to what makes a really good inventor or a really good invention. I mean everything here has had so much thought poured into it by somebody. You know, somebody has figured out how to make things work and link them together and it, it shows such a depth of kind of human endeavour that one generation passes on its knowledge to the next, to the next, to the next and everybody's then trying to push as far as they can into what's possible. And places like this, they show the history, they show the timeline of what people have been able to achieve at any point. And you can see, you know, it gets bigger and grander and grander at every generation. What are we doing? What's, what, what's our legacy going to be?